The question, are we alone, has changed over time. It has a history that is both opaque and dusty and can only be traced as far back as the Greeks. Let's have a look at what the ancient Greeks and Romans thought about the question, are we alone? Now, let's start with a very early scientist, or a Greek, Thales of Miletus. And he is recognized for breaking from the use of mythology. He tried to explain the world and the universe with theories and hypotheses. So he was from Miletus, and where's Miletus? Here's Greece, and here's where Miletus was. Now there's Metrodorus of Chios, a pupil of Democritus, and uh, he lived in, of course, Chios, and there, where's that? That's right there on that island there. And he wrote, to consider the earth the only populated world in infinite space is as absurd as to assert that in an, in an entire field sown with millet, only one grain will grow. How absurd is that? <laughs> There's also Lucretius. He wrote a book called On the Nature of the Universe in about 70 BC. And in this book, you will find the statement, we must realize that there are other worlds in other parts of the universe with races of different men and different animals. That's what he thought. This is not just sarcasm. Then there's a, a little bit of a more sarcastic guy. I think he's the, the Voltaire of antiquity. His name is Lucian of Samosata. Now, Samosata is in present-day well, present Turkey right there. And he wrote a book called A True Story. As I said, it's a little bit sarcastic because it's an adventure story. The heroes are caught up by a whirlwind and taken to the moon, where they find themselves embroiled in a full-scale war between the king of the moon and the king of the sun over the colonization of the morning star Venus. Now, in antiquity, there seems to have been a controversy between those who believed in a plurality of worlds, other worlds that harbor intelligent life, and another school of thought that thought the Earth is unique. It's in the center. There can be no other systems of worlds. So on the left-hand side, the plurality of worlds, we have Leucippus, Democritus, and Epicurus. And they called themselves the atomists. We could call them the materialists. They banished the supernatural from the world and believed in a plurality of worlds. Now, on the right, the Earth is unique side, we have Plato and Aristotle, and in their model, there's a nested hierarchy of celestial spheres. Now, what did that look like? Well, the Earth is in the center, and then you have the flames coming out, going in the right direction, away from the Earth. And then you have the moon, the circle of Mercury, Venus, and then comes the Sun, and then comes Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and then you have a series of, uh, well, prime mobile and where the gods lived. And uh, Aristotle justified this Earth-centered model in the following way. He wrote, if there were more than one world, the elements of the Earth and fire would have more than one natural place toward which to move, a physical and logical contradiction. So let's try to summarize this controversy that was very prevalent at the time of, in antiquity. So on the left, we have the universe of the atomists. And on the right, we have the universe of, let's call them the Aristotelians. So the atomists thought oh, there, were, there was a plurality of worlds. The Aristotelians denied the idea of a plurality of worlds. The atomists thought that the universe, the world was random and purposeless, atheistic, there was no room for gods. But the Aristotelians, they thought the world was governed by design, it was theological, it had a purpose, and it was the theistic, it had room for the gods. The atomists thought the heavens are changing, while the Aristotelians thought, no, no, the heavens are unchanging, and they attain perfection in those outer rings that we saw in the previous model. The atomists thought the universe was homogeneous and infinite, while the Aristotelians thought, no, no, it's hierarchical and finite. So that's a simplistic summary of the controversy in antiquity that had a lot of, of relevance for their approach to the question, are we alone in the universe? Because what was the universe? Were there a plurality of worlds with many intelligent beings? Or no, there's only one geocentric model. If a, a good summary of this is in Crow 2008. 
We've looked back to antiquity 2,000 years ago. The early Greek and Roman views now seem naive to us. But when our descendants 2,000 years from now look back to our time, I'm confident that our current views will seem as naive to them. The underestimation of your predecessors is your guarantee that you are making progress.